Good morning and welcome to Tumiskaming Deanery Morning Prayer for February 28th. This is the second Sunday of Lent. My name is Linda White and I'm the officiant for today. Our preacher is the Reverend Dr. Peter Armstrong. Our reader is the Venerable Joan Locke. And on music and vocals is Miss Janet Parfit. I do not glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Please join in our opening hymn, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. You'll notice in this hymn that we're bringing the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And some of you may be thinking at home, well, we're not in the house of the Lord. We're in our own homes. When we worship and when we offer praise in our own home, it becomes the house of the Lord as well. So I invite you to sing joyfully um, this hymn. <laughs> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Join in our um, canticle. Cast your burden upon the Lord. And he will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day. The God of our salvation who bears our burdens. First reading is from Genesis chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. As for Sari, your wife, you shall not call her Sari, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is a portion of Psalm 22. I invite you to join in the white reading. I will read the yellow part if you will join uh, in, the, in the white. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All of you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn. The saving deeds that he has done. We join together in the psalm prayer. Father, your tortured son felt abandoned and cried out in anguish from the cross. Yet you delivered him. He overcame the bonds of death and rose in triumph from the grave. Do not hide your face from those who cry out to you. Feed the hungry, strengthen the weak, and break the chains of the oppressed, that your people may rejoice in your saving deeds. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We join together in and sing the canticle, Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways 
and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. The second reading is from Romans chapter 4, beginning at the 13th verse. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is no, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall, be your, shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare our hearts to hear the gospel, let us join in the responsory for Lent. Incline your ear to me, make haste to answer when I call. Incline your ear to me, make haste to answer when I call. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Make haste to answer when I call. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Make haste to answer me when I call. You, O Lord, endure forever and your name from age to age. Make haste to answer when I call. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to have pity upon her. Make haste to answer when I call. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to answer when I call. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, 
he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who, who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But turning to his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter, Mark 8, 33. And dear God, may only the truth be spoken and only the truth be heard. I speak the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of us may remember a revealing exchange last year. It was broadcast widely in the American media. And it was among uh, U.S. President Donald Trump and a governor, state governor and leaders in a Western U.S. state. And raging wildfires were causing massive destruction and even loss of life. And as appropriate, uh, the president visited the area to demonstrate concern. But at the news briefing afterwards, though, a fire official commented that the environmental degradation was, had made the problem of wildfires much uh, more worse, much more serious in re recent years. View almost universally shared. The president didn't want to hear that and made a dismissive comment. And this produced an awkward counter response in return. Many Canadians and likely some Americans too, are sometimes puzzled why the past American president enjoyed the breadth of popularity which he continues to carry. When there seems to be a strange disconnect, for example, between fires and environmental degradation on one hand, and denying powerful evidence of our human behavior and effect on the other. But for some of us, that news conference was a very revealing and honest moment. There are some truths which are so disturbing, we don't want to admit them. And further, if we can be seen as contributing to the problem, it's even harder for many of us to admit that we might be at fault, that we might be in any way culpable. And that's beautifully illustrated in the gospel reading pointed for today from the end of Mark chapter eight. Mark records that the Lord Jesus is preparing his disciples for what will lie ahead. Jesus specifically names his upcoming suffering, his rejection by the religious authorities, which will lead to his death. So even at this point in his ministry, the Lord Jesus presumably saw the hostility to the gospel by the pious religious authorities of the day. And isn't that a warning to us all uh, who are in positions of faith leadership? But even more than this, Mark records Jesus Christ teaching clearly that he will rise again after death. The facts of Jesus being rejected by religious authorities, his suffering, death, and resurrection are historical facts which no Christian would deny today. But it's all too much for the Apostle Peter. The Messiah is in front of him. Would the person who fulfills the plan of Israel be rejected and cruelly murdered? Peter thinks this is all preposterous. 
And so Peter actually takes Jesus aside. Uh, uh, takes Jesus aside and begins to rebuke him. There's an old bumper sticker which reads, I've already made up my mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. The popularity of that bumper sticker shows how we are often like Peter, the apostle. The facts which are just so disturbing or even horrific. We don't want to consider, even if they might be right. So what does Jesus Christ, the Son of God, do? The other disciples are nearby, and this dangerous practice of denying Jesus' death and resurrection is a cancerous thought, which might spread to them, too. Taking Peter aside, note, we correct in private. Taking Peter aside, the Lord Jesus rebukes Peter sharply, saying, get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but on the side of people. Jesus Christ knew that this denial of the crucifixion and resurrection is a devilish lie. And Peter needs to be disciplined decisively. Let's pay attention to the text. Jesus says that Peter's words reveal that he's not on the Lord's side, but the side of people. People's perspective can actually be contrary to God's. So what are we to make of all this? Well, none of us likes to be rebuked, do we? When we're children, we're guided, encouraged, and sometimes rebuked by our parents or our teachers or other adults, other authorities. And when we're adults ourselves, there are still times when we need to be corrected those who love us most are the ones who are most likely to challenge us, to help us see the truth and the truth about ourselves more clearly. Our spouses, our friends, our business colleagues. We all need to be corrected sooner or later, and it's actually a sign of love when someone takes on the hard task of telling us what is true, not the soothing whispers we would rather hear. Christians understand this need for correction, for reorientation toward God, is not just an individual process. The church itself is in need of reform. Branches need to be pruned for the health of the entire organism. We constantly need to be reorienting ourselves to God. We notice that Peter recoiled when he was confronted with the horror of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Doesn't that tell us a lot about ourselves? The Lord Jesus says that denying God's perfect redemptive work is actually on the side of people rebelling against God's perfect self-giving to restore us to himself. This process of reform, even of being prepared to rebuke one another so they can be restored, is an ongoing process for Christian maturity, both for individuals and for the whole body of Christ. As we're presently in the season of Lent, it's especially appropriate that we examine ourselves to see if we are on the Lord's side or if we're being tempted 
to adopt the values of this broken world with so many in active rebellion against God's perfect will. The gospel passage appointed for today goes on. As the Lord Jesus challenges his listeners of yesterday and today to have the courage and grace to follow where the road is narrow. We are called to dare to live in light of Jesus' death and resurrection with all that means for us and for the world. We're called to live for Christ without fear or shame, but with confidence and courage in the one who gave his very life for us, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In fact, this passage comes with a sober warning that if we're ashamed to admit how much Jesus Christ means to us, the Lord himself will be ashamed of us when he comes in power and glory. Dear friends, we are not to live the gospel in secrecy, fear, or shame, but honor Christ himself and all that he has done in his saving work for his greater honor and glory. Amen. We join together now in singing by faith.
we join together now in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray for, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, Iglesia Anglicana in Central America, in the Algoma cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Joseph and St. George, Holy Trinity Jocelyn, St. George's Echo Bay, the Chapel of the Intercession in Llewellyn Beach, and the Reverend Susan Montague Coyle, Deacon Incumbent and Administrator, and the Reverend Canon Rosalie Goes, Honorary. And in the Diocese of Tarime, we pray for Bishop Muita, Vicar General Reverend Samuel Nyag. Geswa, and Diocesan Secre Secretary Reverend John Nsuma and their staff and family, and the parish of Manguka, Reverend Elias Philemon. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, especially we pray for all of the congregations in our deanery for St. Paul and St. John, St. James, St. Simon, Holy Trinity, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Mary's, St. Peter's, St. John's, and St. Bryce's, and Christ Church. And in faithful witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among the nations and people. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, for the pure persecuted, for the sick and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all in danger. We pray for those who are especially in our hearts just now. That they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all we have injured or offended, known or unknown. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. The Collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, Give us faith to perceive his glory, that being strengthened by his grace, we may be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have safely brought us to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into any sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn today is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. How deep the Father's love Beyond all measure, that he would give his only son to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing more, the father turns his face away, as wounds which were the chosen one.
there are a couple of announcements uh, this Sunday. We invite you to join in the various services available throughout the week during this Lent time. Archbishop Anne is offering uh, sunrise prayers beginning at 7.15 uh, each morning, live on her Facebook page, uh, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. So the service can also be accessed uh, later in the day by going on to her webpage. Uh, she's also offering some um, evening prayer services as well. So uh, you can tune into the diocesan website um, and uh, find out details there. Our uh, deanery is offering a BCP Compline service on Tuesdays and an evening prayer service on Thursdays. So uh, you'll find those available anytime after 4 p.m. if you would go on to the St. Mary Magdalene Sturgeon Falls YouTube channel. Uh, there's another address there. Uh, perhaps when the service is over, we can um, go back to this page and you can jot that down if you need to. But you can also check on your own congregation's webpage uh, for ongoing information um, as well. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.